You too. Good morning. Oh, I'm on fire. Anybody else on fire? How's everybody doing today? I personally am doing just fine, just splendid. I am uh, gonna have an early day today. Road closed, local traffic only. Oh dear. Well, there ain't nothing we can do about that. Well, it, I okay, so road closed, local traffic only. Uh, and then I just turned down a truck with a no truck sign. Um, so in that situation, what am, what am I supposed to do? I mean, there was no indication that the road was closed ahead. I'm sitting at the left hand, uh, I'm sitting in the left, uh, left turning lane and, uh, I'm looking to make a left to go the route that I'm supposed to be going down. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, road closed. And then you look the only way out. There's no left, there's only a right-hand turn, and the right-hand turn says no trucks. What do you do in a situation like that? Stop, put your four-ways on. Stop, put your four-ways on, call the cops. Or here, I like this one. Put your four-ways on and try to back up. Come on, man. So, you know, in this situation, in my mind, I didn't even hesitate. No trucks? Well, I don't have any other option. I'm certainly not going to go forward, okay, into a construction zone and get caught there not being able to turn around. Right? So I'll take my chances with a no-truck road. Nine times out of ten, judging by not in Chicago or Atlanta, Boston, New York City, right? So chances are it's a weight, it's a weight, it's a weight thing. You know, chances are it's uh, it, it didn't say weight restriction on it. It just said no trucks, right? Didn't say low bridge. Didn't say uh, you know anything about weight. But typically that's what you're gonna find, right? They don't want trucks going up and through here. Oftentimes it is somewhat of a residential area. It's a uh, forty mile an hour zone, so. But it, it, to me, if, if there's if there's a if there's a cop up here, and they decide they're going to pull me over, um, and they decide they're going to pull me over, um, personally, I think I'd be okay. You guys, let me know what you think. Um, but uh, these are the these are the things where, as a as a new driver, as a young driver, right? Uh, you come up against these situations you've never been in before and and your first inclination is is to go as fast as you can to get yourself out of it and you see it all the time right uh, torn up trailers and and and, and, and low bridge uh, uh, strikes and um, you know just getting themselves in in uncompromised positions uh, because they don't want to or they don't have the, the 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 wisdom to know any different, right? It's like, oh, I just got myself in a pickle. Let me get the heck out of here before I get caught. Right? I mean, that's what I used to think. Oh, I'm in a jam. How can I get out of it as quickly as possible? And the thing about it is, is that in a tractor trailer, in a, in a semi, in a commercial vehicle, there is no quick resolution. I mean, maybe there are sometimes, but um, you know, nine times out of 10, it's going to uh, require some thought, right? Uh, a little bit of foresight, right? And, and you can trip plan till the cows come home. Well, driver's lounge, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have got yourself in that position with a road closed if you had a trip planned. Well, maybe, maybe. Okay, I'm not gonna say no. I'm not gonna say you're wrong, but um, but um, I'm just coming up to a stop sign here, and I'm thinking, okay, what? 
So it's a stop sign and a dead end. And I just seen traffic going north and south. I'm sorry, east and west. What's my GPS telling me to do? Nothing. Stop and ask for guidance. <laughs> Hey, don't you love that? Don't you love that when your GPS tells you, I don't know what the fuck to do. Maybe you should stop and ask somebody. It's like, oh, thanks. Just when I need you most, right? You leave me hanging. Thanks, Linda. Right? Thanks, Linda. Can I? Oh. Let's see. Okay, well, that wasn't so bad. So, trip plan, of course, right? And I did trip plan, <laughs> right? Like, I trip plan to the extent that most of us do. How much time do I have on my clock? Where am I going? When do I have to be there? And where, if I can't get there today, where am I going to stop to reset? I mean, that's the extent of the trip plan, right? Let, let's be real. I mean, I don't know anyone who's uh, who's going, getting out the atlas and, 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 and marking. I mean, yeah, old days where, you know, the only thing you had was a, was a pay phone and, and a good atlas and an old Rand McNally atlas. Yeah, sure, you want to, like, highlight your route and so you can refer, you know, reference it quickly and whatnot, right? Uh, what, what was uh, when I started driving 20 years ago? GPSs have come like leaps and bounds in 20 years, right? I remember the first GPS I had. It was this little Tom Tom. You guys remember Tom Tom? Okay, that's how long ago I, uh, I. It was like this little GPS. It was like the equivalent of Pong. Remember the game Pong? That's what the equivalent of this GPS was. It was like. Remember the movie uh, Vacation, okay? And Chevy Chase is sitting there. It's right at the beginning of the movie, and he's got the, uh, what was it, ColecoVision? Remember ColecoVision? Oh, boy, I'm showing my age now. Atari, ColecoVision, one of the two. And he's and he's showing them, okay, we're going to go here. And he's and he's made his uh, thing there on the chick, 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 right? The old, uh, the old grocery getter, whatever he called it. And... Um, Man, that takes me back. The good old days where things were simpler, right? And um, the thing about it is, is that GPSs have come so far that it, it, it requires, like, the driver to basically um, just go down the road without thought. And I'm not so sure that that's a good thing. Those of us who've been out here a little while... Um, have found ourselves in these situations where um, without it, had we not trip planned, had we not, you know, uh, had some foresight, um, we, you know, we'd be, in, we'd be in a jam, right? Be in a bit of a pickle. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't like taking my turn in the pickle barrel, right? The old pickle barrel, you ever hear that one? Okay, I'll tell you a quick joke, okay? The quick joke is, um, the quick joke is the guy goes and he says, uh, goes into the bar and he says, um, you know, I sure am, I sure am horny, you know, I sure am horny. And, uh, they said, oh, well, you know, what, 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 what ends up happening is, is you have a few more drinks and you go all back there and there's a barrel and there's a hole cut in it. And you just go out there and, uh, you, you get, you stand in front of the barrel there and you take your turn and. And and, uh, and 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 come back in for a couple of drinks, and he says, "Bet, right? Bet." So he goes out there it's Saturday night, and he stands in line, and sure as shit, you know, he takes care of his business, goes back in. That was great, right? Comes back the next day, Sunday, and you know, uh, there there's a uh, he, you know, is hey, is the pickle barrel still out back? Yep, pickle barrel still out back. So he gets in line, a little bit of a bigger line this time, eh? Comes back the next day, Monday. And he's looking, and he and the lineup's all the way to the front door. 
and he goes inside to the bartender and he says like holy shit like that's gotten popular eh? like what uh what what's going on how come such a long line and they say it's your turn in the pickle barrel <laughs> Hey, your turn in the pickle barrel. Very long line. Pay up. Anyways. Uh, sorry you had to sit through that. <laughs> I don't like the pickle barrel, right? I don't like to find myself in the pickle barrel. And, um, you know, long and short of it is uh, sometimes no matter, you know, how, how, how well we, uh, we think we got it, you know, things just happen out here. That's the reality. And, um, and, and it's, and it's being able to, uh, to navigate your way through, stop, right? Take your time. Don't be afraid. Like, don't worry about the traffic. Don't like, listen, you, you don't want to find yourself in a situation where you're, uh, you're wrapping the trailer around something. Okay. There's a video there, uh, on YouTube and, and the whole side of the trailer is pushed in. And so he says on the video, he says like, you know, I was in Atlanta and uh, oh, I'm gonna have to get off this. He's got a 53 foot trailer, right? With a day cab and he's doing a linen service, a hospital. If those of you who have seen the video, I'm sure you have. Anyway, he's doing linen for, for, uh, for, for uh, like hospitals, right? So probably hazmat, I would assume that shit's filthy. Anyways, and uh, he says they put me on a new route and they had me going into the hospital in Atlanta. And next thing you know, I was trying not to hit a car, he says. And, and, and next thing you know, I didn't even see it. This tree just jumped out in front of me. And I mean, the, the right at the middle of the trailer, the whole thing's pushed in and the, and the roof goes up like this, right? So you can see what happened. Well, here's the kicker of the thing was, was that he says, so, you know, I, I didn't even realize I did it. And then I was able to back out of it is exactly what he said. Good thing I was able to back out of it and get around it. So here's the thing. And my point of it is, is that he found himself in a compromised position. He got nervous. He's like, where, how, how do I get the fuck out of here? He thought he forgot he's got... 53 foot of, of track of trailer behind him and he started driving it like he's driving a car that's what happened because the fact that the, the how i know that is because if it, if the turn wasn't if he wasn't able to negotiate the turn then he wouldn't have been able to back out of it and negotiate the turn right so if he had just stopped taken a deep breath negotiate you know assess the situation and proceeded with caution he wouldn't have found himself uh, terminated because they ended up firing him, right? And and the reason they fired him is because, I mean, they can't have that liability. It was a brand new 53 foot trailer, right? These companies are barely surviving, right? I mean, they are. I mean, I say they're barely surviving. I mean, how about I'll say this: they're surviving with a lot less than they than they than they're accustomed to surviving with. And they don't want drivers wrapping their equipment around stuff. And, and and not only the equipment loss, it's the insurance rate. So now they're left with a dilemma of, am I going to claim this on my insurance and now my insurance goes up exponentially? Or am I going to eat it? And at, at any case, they're just like, I cannot believe this driver could be so fucking stupid. Right? I can't believe this driver. They're all, they're all pre-assigned routes. They go in and out of these hospitals all day, every day. So they're not going to send you somewhere that they that you can't be or that you, you can't, you know, navigate. But anyways, and, and he didn't even, they didn't even have to tell me they were a new driver. That's just shit that new drivers do, right? I mean, uh, I found myself in a situation. Luckily, I never uh, wrapped the trailer around anything or, or you know, and, and I'm not going to say because I'm that good. I mean, I am, but I'm not going to say it out loud. I'm going to say I got lucky. I did. I got lucky, right? A lot of what I did was uh, was um, dedicated at the beginning. And so I got used to going to the same place. And uh, and I got my chops, eh, right? I got my chops. I got my feet wet. And I gained some confidence. And that has a lot to do with it, too. Confidence. You know? You can you can you can you can sense confidence in a driver, 
right? You know how how long these drivers have been on the road. All you have to do is have a three second conversation with them in the fuel island. So, anyways, you guys be safe. Make good decisions. Don't be in a hurry. You know, you don't want to lose your job. You don't want you know you know you don't you don't want to deal with the bullshit, the nonsense, the garbage. You don't want to deal with it. So just take your time. Pull that fucking button, right? Pull it. Get out. Assess the situation. Most of you already have your fucking reflective vests on anyways. Get out of the truck, you know, suited and booted. Assess the situation and then determine how you're going to proceed. Don't just go willy-nilly, right, and, and be like, oh, I hope I can. I hope I can. And then find out, oh, fuck, I guess I couldn't. And now what, right? So make good decisions, take your time, be safe. Driver's Lounge, over and out.